Uh, today I'm going to walk you through the solution of the first challenge of our CTF project. You can find it here, ctfcomodosec.com. And I'll try to walk you through the thought process an attacker can go through while trying to solve such a challenge. How do you approach it? So, um, the first thing, let's look at our page. We have US states and cities. We can see a list of states and corresponding cities. And if we look at the URL, we can see we're only sending one parameter here, the city parameter in the URL. And as we can imagine, we sent a parameter New York, so we get cities that contain New York in them. Uh, so first thing we can do, obviously, try and change this parameter to a different value. Let's uh, only pass the word new, for example. Uh, and as we can imagine, we get different results, but already we can learn something interesting because we can see that we are not limited to only cities that are named new, so it's not an equal uh, statement, but it's a like statement. There are also cities here that simply contain the word new, so new site, new hope, new market, and so forth. So at least from one side, or, or the ending side, there is some sort of a joker attached to our query. Um, we can try and, and, and take this uh, thought process a bit farther and simply pass, for example, EW to see if there is a joker on the other side. And now we can see that even though our word doesn't start with N, we get NEW, we get the new site city. So we can imagine how the query uh, looks like. It probably has some joker from both sides of our input. So let's try and construct this query, this SQL query that the server is likely to use. We can see that we're bringing here at least two columns from the query, the state and the city. Maybe more, we don't know at this stage. So our query might look something like this. Select state city from start sort of table. We don't know the name of the table yet. It's not that important. And then there is probably a workload where our input comes to life. So where city, or city name, or however the column is called in the database, like, we assume it's a like and not an equal, because as we saw, there is a, a, a joker attached. And now we can assume it goes something like this. There is the joker. Then there is concatenation. We don't know it yet, but we assume, we hope, there is concatenation of strings and our input probably will look something like this and the joker on the other side so this is our assumption of how the query looks like we can try and uh, validate this assumption simply by passing one quote as our input what happens if we send one quote as our input how will this query look like so this query if we are correct, and this is indeed the, the query structure, and we simply replace this input, our input, with something like a single quote, the query might look something like this. Select state city from table where city like our input. And if you look at it and you know a little bit about SQL, you understand that this is not the correct syntax. We have three quotes here. So we open a quote, we close a quote, we open another quote, and we don't close it. So we expect some sort of a syntax error. So let's try and see what happens if we send a single quote to uh, the value of the city parameter. OK, we can see that we received some sort of an error. You have an error in your SQL syntax. So as we thought, the quote actually broke the syntax that we, we can understand that we are now changing the SQL structure we have here SQL injection we can actually change the query that is being performed on the database uh, reading a bit farther the manual uh, check the manual that corresponds to your MySQL server version so we already learned that the database being used is MySQL this is very important for us to uh, build the correct payload and a uh, server version for the right syntax to use, near, quote, uh, joker, quote, quote. So we can even imagine now that our query is more or less correct. There is this uh, joker being passed, and indeed it's uh, enclosed in quotes. We broke the quote, and that's what caused the syntax error.
going back, this is after all a CTF, we're trying to get a flag. So now that we know that there is SQL injection, we can assume that the flag is hidden somewhere in the database and we need to find where this uh, flag might be. So our first fault might be, well, maybe it's somewhere in the table that we're querying. Maybe there's some secret state name or city name that contains this flag. So maybe first thing to do is try to get the database to return all possible states and cities from the table. How can we do that? What input can we use to uh, bring back all the data? So we know that a single quote that we used earlier as input allowed us to break out of the query, to input our own SQL. So what uh, will we get if we input something like or one equals one? How does this query act now? So select state city from table where city like this joker and this is now syntactically correct. Okay, it doesn't make much sense, but it's syntactically correct. Or one equals one. So we bring cities that are something like this, which is no city, or where one equals one. But we still have this um, trailing rest of SQL that we didn't put it there, it's there because this is how the application works, but we want to get rid of it. So a very standard thing will be to simply comment this section out uh, using the comment sign of the SQL language for MySQL, as we saw, this is MySQL, which is a hashtag. However, there is a small problem here. If we simply go here to the uh, URL and pass this payload or one equal, sorry, or one equals one and then we put this symbol for quote it will not work simply because the um, we, we're handling with a web application we're looking at the web application this is a URL Our parameters slightly tend to sometimes change when we send them through a URL and specifically this symbol is not being sent to the database at all because this is how the browser interprets these symbols when you put a symbol like this in the URL, the browser interprets it as something not to be sent to the server, and we can put here any sort of data, and this will not be sent at all by our browser. Let's have a look at it from uh, how does it look like in the network level. We'll use a small uh, HTTP proxy here, and we'll send the same request. And now that it's being logged to our uh, proxy, we can see that the hashtag value and everything that came after it was not sent to the server at all. This is how browser interpret URL. So what can we do to send this hashtag after all? We need to send it to the database. We can simply encode it, encode it in, uh, as a URL uh, parameter. We'll choose here URL encoding. We see that instead of sending the hashtag as is, we can send this value and this the browser knows the browser knows how to uh, handle this sort of value it is being sent to the database as we can see here now that we send it like this it is being sent to the database and now the database will do a URL decode and will turn it back to the hashtag the server will do it and then the database will get the query that we wanted to send and as we can see here we do get results back, no syntax error, so our query must have been sent like this. We managed to comment out the rest of the query. And as we can see, we also get a lot, lot, lot of data here. So we managed to extract all the information from the table, from the database with this query. We see all the way to WY starting with AL, okay? Okay, so now that we have all the data in the table, do we have our flag? Let's do a quick search. Is there anything like flag in the uh, database? Well, this is not a flag, obviously. Anything else that was returned to us? Well, not really. No flag here. So this is not the way to go. We are extracting database. We're extracting information from the database, but not the information that we want. So how do we proceed here? Well, if it was a real um, application and not a CTF, we can now simply try and access other tables on the database, start to extract data by try and error and see what data there is, what tables there are, what column names. But as it is a CTF, 
we can imagine that maybe somewhere in the challenge there is some clues of where we should go. So maybe this is the time to look at the uh, source of the page. So what do we have here? We have the HTML and JavaScript source. Um, but if we go through it very briefly with a search and search for the word flag, we can see this hidden section in the page. Uh, it's commented out, it's not hidden. Uh, select flag ID, flag from flags. This looks like a SQL query. Uh, obviously, this is here as a clue for us. Uh, we can learn from it that probably the table that contains the flag is called flags. Uh, we can imagine we're in some table called cities, but we need to access another table to get our flag. And probably there's a column name, named flag ID and flag where, where our flag hides. So how do we access different table with a single query? Okay, we have this query now. We want to access a different table. Well, uh, this is done in SQL using the word union. This is a, a SQL function. We can simply change our input here. We'll keep the hashtag at the end because we still want to comment the rest of the query out. And now we'll start our input again with a quote to break out of uh, the quotes. And then we can try and do a union. This allows us to bring data from other tables into the results. And as we see, we selected here two values, state, city. The query here is select flag ID, flag two values again. This seems to be um, a lucky coincidence. So we can send uh, this sort of query. Union, select flag ID, flag from flags. If everything will work correctly, when we send this data again after encoding the hashtag uh, as URL, we hopefully will get the flag ID flag data from flags attached to the results that we get in the uh, challenge. So let's try that. And we'll send our uh, payload. So again, city equals new, okay, New York doesn't matter, comma, quote to break out, union, select flag ID, flag from flags, and then this is the hashtag to comment out the rest of the query. So trying to perform that, and well, we seem to be unlucky, and we receive an error. The use select statement have a different number of columns. So what do we learn? First, that we managed to perform a union select. This is syntactically was correct. However, the problem is that the two select statements, the select that the database is usually performing, the application uh, server approaches the database with the regular select, this one, and the one that we sent, this one, seem to have a different number of columns. So what we can learn here, that if we go back to regular uh, to, to, to a regular statement, even though we're only seeing two columns here, state and city, there probably are other columns being returned from the database that we are not simply being displayed. Uh, some columns are being returned from the database and the server uses them for something else. Um, so we can now try and uh, enumerate the number of columns being returned by this uh, union, uh, by this select statement, simply by try and error. I will send the same <coughs> query again, only this time we'll add a third column. So earlier we were asking for two columns, flag ID, flag. Now we're asking for three columns. Why three? Well, we're trying. We're adding a third value. Now it doesn't matter. Maybe there are three columns in the uh, original select query. Well, unfortunately, no. It is still incorrect. But in the same way, we can try again four columns. Or four, the right number? Well, still no. The use select statement have a different number of columns. Maybe five. Is this our lucky number? Got results back. So our union um, select worked. So apparently there were originally five columns in the select statement. So we got first some sort of uh, result from the original query, but we also get the result of our query. What did we ask for? We asked for a flag. This looks like a possible flag. Let's try and see if this is indeed our flag. And by going to proof of capture, challenge one, and giving this flag as the result, we can see that indeed we managed to solve the challenge.
So just to summarize, what did we learn here? Well, we learned a few things. One, when approaching an application, it's a good practice to start by trying to see how the application usually behaves, how it's supposed to work. By using different city names, we learn very quickly that the application is probably executing some sort of SQL uh, against the database with a like statement. We also learned that there's very probably a joker being used. Then we try to see if we can alter this SQL query uh, simply by inputting one single quote uh, and we receive the syntax error that uh, taught us that indeed we are altering the SQL being executed and the database being used is MySQL. This came handy a moment later when we tried to extract all the data from the table using the OR1 equals 1 payload when we had to use the correct com comment sign for MySQL. We also had to encode this comment sign, this hashtag, uh, in URL encoding, so it's actually being sent from our browser to the server. <clears throat> Later, we learned that the flag is not contained in the same table that we were looking at, but at another table, we were lucky enough to find a clue to tell us which table it's actually at. Uh, we could have enumerated this information ourselves, but as it being a CTF, and there were some clues left behind for us to find. Finally, we learned that when using a union statement, we need to find the correct number of columns to input into our uh, select query, and we can simply find that by try and error, uh, where the lucky number was five, and we got our flag. So that's all for this video. I hope you got something out of it. Uh, see you at the next challenge, and uh, next CTF. Bye.